Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today, we are on episode number 113. And we're going to go ahead and round out the module that we've been developing the last two episodes. So if you want to check out episode number 111 and 112, it can get you, get you up till this point. Or you can just hop over to 112 and download the zip folder with the module in it if you want to get started. Before we get started though, I'm Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also, head over to CodeKarate.com and sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already. You can also find me on Google+. And thanks again to today's sponsor, Drupalize.me. If you want to learn Drupal, check out Drupalize.me. It has tons of videos on Drupal, from the basics to the most advanced topics. also has Dru or videos on jQuery and a whole bunch of other technology and web related topics. So go ahead and give them a look if you haven't already and if you do use the coupon code CK20FEB so you get 20% off and they know that I'm sending you over there. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you remember yesterday we left off with our little JS confirm module where we could add paths to this text area here and when we added those paths as you can see I'm on the front page if I try to navigate away it gives us this little JavaScript confirm box and one of the main reasons we're going to be using this or I would want to use this on a site is for making sure people fill out long forms without accidentally clicking away so if you have a form or web form or content type that's extremely long and you want to make sure that they don't accidentally click a link when they're filling it out, maybe they get 70% done and they accidentally click away, they might get a little frustrated. So you add a little JavaScript just to make sure you can prevent that. One of the things you'll notice though, it's easy to add it to a node add form. For instance, I can easily add it to a node add article page just by coming in here and changing this to node add article. Now anytime I want to add an article and I start typing and then I want to leave the page, it's going to give me the message. But what about when I'm trying to edit a, an article? In this case, it gets a little more difficult because if you look at the path, I'll go ahead and open this in a new tab here so we can take a look at the path a little more easily. It's node 65 edit. Well, because I want to just get this JavaScript on the article. There's really no way to do this. I could get it on all the node pages by using node slash star slash edit, but that would be for every content type. So that would be for basic page, client, contact, any other content type I have on my site. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little code that's going to add some additional settings or one additional setting to this administration page that's going to allow me to check which node edit pages I want to use the JavaScript on. So we're going to start by hopping into our module here. I'm going to scroll down into the settings form. We're going to start with that. So s essentially we're just going to go ahead and add another form element and this time this form element is going to be a list of checkboxes. So I'm going to say going to add a new form element. I'm going to call this js underscore confirm underscore content type edit. We need to say this is of course an array. The type in this case is going to be checkboxes. We give it a title here. And for the title I'm going to use content type edit forms I'm gonna add a default value and this default value is th this is where the whole old values are gonna get pulled in and we want to make sure we use the same text that we use right here so this same piece is going to be used right here and we also want to give it a default in case there isn't currently a variable. I'm just going to use an array because it's multiple checkboxes, so there could be multiple values selected. Going to give it a description, and I'm going to go ahead and just copy in this longer description here that I have. This 
longer description just says select the content types from the list to display the JS confirm pop-up on. The pop-up will be displayed on these content types note edit pages. I need to change this to a double quote here. And the last section is going to be the actual options that we want to display. And here we're going to use a handy Drupal function called node type get names. You see here in the nice little dialog I get it, this and you can look this up on api.drupal.org as well. But this returns a list of available node type names. And the way it's the way it works is it's an array and the key of the array is the actual type, the node type, so in this case it's going to be article with an underscore a and then the actual value is going to be the nice printed name. So in this case it's going to give me a list with a key of article, page, client, these lowercase values here and the actual display is going to be this nicer displayed value right there. So that should be all we need there. Go ahead and add a semicolon here, save this, and we'll go ahead and come back to our form. And now you can see it pulls in all our content types. I can select article and client or whatever other content types I want, click save. The values will be stored, of course. But the next step is to, of course, make sure it actually gets displayed or the JavaScript gets added on those pages. So we're going to come over here. I'm going to add a section down here right below our page match section that we have in this hook init function. Remember the hook init function or this hook init hook in Drupal, which in this case we use our module name init, runs every time a page is loaded. Keep in mind this isn't going to work on cached pages so and just keep that in mind it's not necessarily going to work on cached pages It's not going to run every time the page loads so if you have cached pages and you change the settings on your administration page you'll have to clear the cache and then I believe it still will work after that point but just keep in mind if you have caching hook in it is a little less reliable because it only runs the first time before the cache is built but the first section here we do the page matching. The sec second section we're actually going to do this node edit matching. So we're going to match and see if we're on a node edit page. And if we are, we're going to check to see if we're on the correct node type. So in this case, we of course only wanted on article pages or I think I selected client pages. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check if it matches either the page match section or the node match node edit match section we're gonna go ahead and make sure we add this JavaScript that's listed down below so I'm gonna start by just setting a variable I'm going to default it to false the reason I'm gonna do that is that just gives me the fallback so if everything goes through and it doesn't match any of my other conditions it of course doesn't match that it's on the correct node edit page I'm then going to use a function called arg in Drupal, which basically allows you to pull arguments from the URL, starting with zero. So in this case, the zero is going to match up with, if I'm on a node edit page here, the zero is going to pull this node value, one would pull the 65, and two would pull edit. So I want to say if the very first argument, or the zero argument, in the URL is node, and arg2, which is the third argument in the list, is edit, which essentially means we are on a node edit page. Then I want to use a Drupal function called menu get object. And this is going to load by default the node object based on the page you're on. So if you're on node 65 edit, as in the case up here, it's going to get the full node object for node 65. If also if I was on the view page in the node view, so node slash 65 without the edit, it's still going to pull in the information for node 65. Each node object has a specific uh, type, 
So in this case, we can use the node type to check if it's in the variable that we, of course, set in this form field right here. So this, in this case, we selected an article and client in the, when we created this form or when we submitted this form. We want to check if this node type is either an article or client type. And if so, then we'll say the node edit does match. So we're going to go ahead and say if it's in an array, and then we have to select the actual needle or the thing we're searching for. So if the node type of this node, which it could be article, could be anything, is in the array that is actually the variable we're going to be pulling from. which in this case if you remember we have this variable is going to pull an array with article and client because those are the two values we selected on our administration form then if this all comes through then we're going to say node edit match is true we're going to come down here and change this if statement because we want to add this JavaScript if either the page matches which is calculated and checked right here or if this node edit matches which is right here so if it's either on the node edit page that you selected or it matches one of the pages it's gonna go ahead and add the JavaScript code that we wrote in the first two episodes or first two parts of this module so let's go ahead and give this a try. Assuming everything is created correctly, you can see we of course have two values, article and client, selected for our content type edit forms. I am on the art edit, edit article test, so I am on an article page. I refresh the page, now if I click away, you'll notice I get the JavaScript pop-up. If I come into content and try to find a basic page here or we'll say here a test type and I edit this you'll notice if I click away nothing happens of course I come back to an article type try to click away well I guess maybe you actually have to open it up inside a new page let me see here well there it worked Let me open this up here. Edit. Okay, so yep. So it is working. If you go to an article edit page and you try to navigate away, the JavaScript is going to pop up. If you go to any other page, such as a test content type page and a basic page content type page or anything else that's not selected, the JavaScript is not going to work. There seems to be some slight minor issues with pulling up and getting the JavaScript to work inside this uh, administration window here but for the most part it works and it was a real simple module hopefully you learned something and if you have any questions go ahead and let me know thanks again to drupalize.me for sponsoring this episode of the daily dose of Drupal and thank you for watching we'll see you next time